What's up, everybody? It's in the place here, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Super Mario Galaxy. In the last episode, we completed the engine room, and we've unlocked the final dome. The garden, which looks shocking, shockingly different from any other dome. Very quiet. So anyway, there's no enemy base in this dome because we've, I guess we've defeated all of them. Or Bowser just hasn't invaded this one? I mean, it seems pretty secret. That's my assumption. So anyway, Deep Dark Galaxy. The Underground Ghost Ship. Now, this one is actually probably my favorite, probably not my favorite, but one of my favorite galaxies. Because, you know, it's open, but it also has some cool little secrets. Like, this thing over here is a replica of Gateway Galaxy. But there's a cool little glitch. You can go in this little house. So that's cool. There's also this thing. This. So if you spin this, the planet begins to deflate. And you know, you can collect all the coins. Then you can long jump and just sort of fly around the planet. I can I can never really get the timing right. Oh, is that good? Yes, it is. So we can just fly around the planet. But the goal is to grab this fire flower. We gotta take it back to the other planet. That could be kind of difficult. Or we could just run. There was a rainbow star we can launch the cannon into. We could launch Mario from the cannon into. Just defeat that magic Koopa. And the spooky part. Just head on down. Follow the instructional arrow made of star bits. There's a lot of jellyfish. Mario typically doesn't have a lot of jellyfish in it. This level is an exception. And this galaxy is pretty interesting because it's a sort of ghost beach level, which we don't see a lot of. But, yeah, there's another Camella fight in this galaxy. You know, just like the one in Space Junk. Wait for the shell magic. Maybe wait till after teleport. Perfect. But yeah, a difference from Space Junk is that we're going to have to 
chase her up to the... What'd you call that? Crow's Nest. That's what you would call this. I think it's actually two more hits instead of just three. I mean, like, three throughout the entire fight, but... Four here. There we go. Simple enough. Now it's time for one of my favorite missions in the entire game. Being Bubble Blast Off. It starts off with a fight against that guy. Wait, is that actually how you're supposed to de defeat him? You can also do it, like, in Toy Time and Gold Leaf. And just jump on him. I mean, you can always... I guess you can do it ranged, too. I would say that makes the fight a lot easier. Or maybe not, since he can hit you with his bubbles a lot easier. Anyways, here, let's take this path this time. I actually don't remember if we actually have to grab the fire flower this time. Might just be optional. Huh. Get the fire flower with Rainbow Star. Fire flower goes flying. Like always, long jumps are a good way to keep your speed up. Except sometimes I found that you can accidentally backwards somersault. Okay, so we're making an ice flower. Doesn't look like there's anything in there. I know. I know I'm missing some star bits, I'm sorry. Okay. Just barely. Ooh. Okay, that guy can launch rocks, so you be very careful. Already at, uh, already at 110 star bits. I've been, like, shocked about my star bit count this entire game. It's just something I'm never going to get used to. There's so many star bits. Take this little flood water blaster all the way to this tiny little planet. We're cheap cheeps. Inhabit. Do we have to defeat all the cheap cheeps or just ground pound all the things? Okay. Now this is a weird objective. We need to ground pound these tennis balls to inflate this watermelon. Ah. 
I don't think the homing ground pound works. It might. Eh, maybe. But there's the star. Pretty simple, pretty simple star, but I think it's fun. No, I'm not going to save my game, actually. Oh, there's a daredevil. Oh, great. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's the Camilla fight, I would imagine. Ghost Ship Daredevil Run. Alright, so I mean, this shouldn't be too bad. It's just one of those things where you gotta be careful, can't be too aggressive. You can't skip the cutscene either. You can spin to grab the shell. It's a pretty useful strategy. Here, let's break these boxes so they're not in our way. Because they don't have any coins in them. Also, a force field. Something that, even though this is a space theme Mario game, we don't see that much. Oh, darn it. You might want to... Ah. Okay, I'm back. It's like these, these lingering fireballs. Those can be very dangerous. Oh, no, I did it again. Okay, I'm back again, again. Alright, this time I'm going to take it kind of slow. Maybe that'll help. Let's see. Maybe from distance? Ah, there we go. Ooh, double kick. Okay. Just got to watch out for these lingering fireballs. See your shell? Yep. Spin to bring it towards. And then, there we go. Perfect. Not bad. Not great either, but I'll take it. Nope, still not gonna save, because we still have missions to complete. Let's see, what's Deep Dark 3? Can I remember? Uh, Guppy in the Underground Lake. Yeah, for some reason Guppy from Sea Slide comes back. Now he's in this sort of ghost beach area, rather than a regular beach area. I mean, the setting's there. But I don't know, this area's just kind of creepy. I mean, ugh, the Gringills.
What? I forgot. I forgot his voice. What? You again? You gotta be kidding me. You wanna run me out of this lake? You gotta get through all eight rings. Fun fact. I didn't know the difference between a pond and a lake for quite a long time. A pond is basically just a little body of water. A lake is typically l larger. I don't know the specifics, but I feel like it's more of a generalization on what determines a lake or a pond. But yeah, this is definitely a lake in this sp specific. I probably said that wrong, but this context. See here, number one. That speed ring's pretty helpful. Helping us get through those little whirlpool things. And we can just grab the star. No! Instead, we're gonna grab the Hidden Star in Deep Dark. Oddly enough, the Hidden Star location is right there on the galaxy's sort of thumbnail, as it were? And I mean, it's featured pretty prominently. But it's pretty simple to get. Just follow the steps of underground ghost ship. Let's see, we gotta wait for the rainbow star to run out. Might as well collect a few star bits. Make things easier for when we need to get the fire... Fire power. Speed run. But now we're going to go underwater. And instead of following the directions, we're going to go all the way down to the bottom. And grab this shell. Then launch it in a mine, causing a chain reaction that will reveal a launch star. The launch star will take us to this weird little box thing. And, you know, it's, it's pretty simple. Just spin the arrow enough times and break this crystal to reveal some sunlight. Lure the boo into the sunlight to get the power star. Let's see, can I grab it from here? Oh, almost, almost. I bet I can do it. Ooh. Boo in a box. Nope, we can probably fit in one more stage. Here, let's see if there's any comets. No comets yet. Yeah, let's uh, do the question box galaxy. 
being the Matter Splatter Galaxy. Watch your step. This is an extension of what we saw back in the Ghostly Galaxy. But this time, instead of being like an auto-scroller, it's pretty cool. It's like, you've got these little things and they make matter for you to jump on. So I guess it's sort of like an auto-scroller, but like a predictable one, if that makes sense. Or more predictable, since you can determine where things are going. But there are also similarities to Ghostly Galaxy's mission, like right here. Oh boy, everyone's favorite power-up, the Spring Mushroom. I don't know. I'm sure there are people who really like the Spring Mushroom. I just... I'm not a huge fan of it. It really feels like a like a Super Mario Odyssey capture, you know? Like something that has its own strengths and weaknesses, but also has like a cool ability? Kind of like the frog. Yeah. This is a Super Mario Odyssey capture. You can jump up through the little grates, they function as semi-solid platforms. Oh, I didn't see the- oh, I didn't see the other platforms until it was too late. I got impatient. Okay, I'm back. Let's see, can we go up this way? Or do we have to bounce there? Okay. Whew. Pretty precise movements here. Eh, eh. There we go. Whoa, <laughs> that was kind of cool. <gasps> oh, no! <sighs> okay, I'm back. Again. Let's see. Taking it slow and steady. So there's like more platform shows up. Yeah. Okay. I don't remember this galaxy being this hard. So we're back to regular. Regular Mario. What's that up there? What is that? Uh... For, like, for the spring mushroom? Can you... Can you bring the spring mushroom here? Like, I'm sure it's possible. Maybe. I don't know. Got a really cool kind of section here. Where it's like an auto scroller. But a very unique one. Like a vertical, no, not a vertical auto scroller. A third person auto scroller, that's what it is. 3D. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Not third person. 3D. 
We see some stuff like this in 2 quite a bit. I think it might be done better here. Eh. There we go. So, I think that's going to do it for this episode. Next time on Super Mario Galaxy, we're going to explore more of the garden. So, thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Cinda Plays. See you guys later. Peace.